Today, we're going to be talking about Harry Trigoboff from the Meriton Group, the founder and the managing director. Now, there are a few things that we can learn from him and what he's done in building his empire as a property developer. Of course, us as residential property investors, building a property portfolio for retirement, don't have a massive amount in common with him, but some of his philosophies and approach to building and developing property is really interesting. And I think there's some insights that we can gain from his thoughts. The Meriton Group is also taking a project on the Gold Coast. They own several buildings, but they're doing another massive project on the Gold Coast. You can see on screen here that there's the proposed uh, development Cyprus, and they're looking to build a thousand apartments in the heart of surface paradise. And this is going to be Mr. Triggerboss' 21st high rise development on the Gold Coast. So the first thing I wanted to listen to was his approach on the current property market. What do you make of the current property market? I'm very disappointed that the people that write only talk about interest rates. Sure, the interest rates when they rise is bad for the market, for, for the prices, 100%. But we have to take into account that at the moment we have no migrants and we don't have workers coming. So when these come, the, we will, the demand will get even bigger. And the demand is very great. That's why the rents are going up. So really interesting points there. So basically what Harry's just said is that the interest rates have been increasing and that is going to put downward pressure on property prices. But with overseas and potentially in Southeast Queensland interstate migration pushing up demand, that's where we can see prices continue to increase. I think Australia is in a housing crisis at the moment. There's not enough rental properties available for a lot of people. Emily and I are actually trying to find a rental property at this point in time, and the market is very tight, and people are offering $50 or $100 or $150 more a week to find a rental property. Now, the reason we're looking for a rental is we want to move out of our home here at the Triple Gable Queenslander and do our raise and build project. But for a lot of other people, they're looking for a roof over their head to get them through day to day, and their rents may have increased $100, $200, $300 a week from where they were. I don't see this supply issue being sorted out in the short term, in the next 12 to 24 months. So unless the government brings on a lot more supply and decreases the demand by reducing the amount of people that enter into Australia, then I continue to see property prices increasing like Harry is predicting here. So it's just a matter of time till the prices go up. The prices have to go up because even the rents, as much as they have gone up, are still lower than they were before the virus. They write about how it went up, not that much. Now, when we talk about prices, sure, <laughs> the prices go up in surface paradise from Main Beach to Broad Beach, <laughs> but that takes that away. Prices are not going up. <laughs> <laughs> One of the really interesting things is with the rents increasing, when the interest rates do eventually come back down or settle, there may be a bigger disparity available for Aussies to get rental income and to get that passive income. As the rents have increased and then the interest rates or debt decreases slightly, that's where investors or residential property investors can get a bigger spread between their income and their expenses to hold a property. One of the other key points I wanted to take away from the interview was around Harry Trigoboff's decision-making process. So let's watch that. Talk to me about your decision-making process. So you've just bought this big development on the Gold Coast. You've got three at Macquarie Park as well, which they describe as your most ambitious project yet. I want to know if it's still the same as it was 50 years ago, when you look at whether this is a good deal or not a good deal. Yeah, it's the same, but it's different in this way. 50 years ago, I had to build and sell, because if I didn't sell, I wouldn't get cash. Today, I have cash, so I can wait if I think something is underpriced right, to sell, right? So, and then now I can build to sell, I can build to keep, and I can do service apartments. So what I think is really interesting there in his decision-making process is that he's been adaptive. Over the 50 years, he's built his empire as a property developer. He's looked with build to sell, build to rent, or looking at the different options, even though service departments have become a staple of the Meriton brand. So part of our decision-making process as investors, learning from his empire and Harry being a, a billionaire and I'm no, nowhere near that status. So there's some things we can learn there. Although we might not be 
multi-million billionaire developers, we can look at how we can refine our process over time to evaluate our situation. In his example, he was looking at his cash available and the product he could create. Now for me, I'm looking at my portfolio and thinking, okay, if I'm generating more cash flow, can I boost that and continue to snowball cash flow? Or should I go for something more aggressive like a development which will suck my cash out or draw on my cash balances and then maybe give a balloon payment at the end once that project is exited? I've been thinking about doing that with a renovation project and looking at flipping, but the costs and the work involved might be far too much as compared to buying and holding something over the long term. So the, I think the big thing around his decision-making process is adapting over time. We can't be stagnant as investors. We need to have continual learning and development. And part of that might be adapting your strategy as you build the property portfolio. And for me, that was starting with growth properties. So building your bread and butter growth properties here in Southeast Queensland, then looking for more of a cash flow deal, which is why Emily and I bought in Northern New South Wales. We bought a unit block to boost the cash flow. And now we're looking at motels or potentially doing subdivisions or renovations the list goes on so work out for yourself what the next step and how you need to adapt and change to continue moving forward in building your property portfolio the last point of this interview i wanted to touch on was his motivations as a developer and as an investor so let's watch that what drives you what motivates you you got enough money you, you've had enough success what, what makes you keep going well that makes me happy you see that what i do so when i was 35 I already made a bit of money. And they told me, why do you still work? I said, oh, I like it. I make it work. When I was 50, they asked me this. When I was 80, they thought, oh, you're very clever, Harry, that you're still working. So there you are. <laughs> By consensus, what I'm doing is the right thing. So as you can see, Harry's very passionate about what he does and he's motivated. Some of his purpose is through his work. And so I think that needs to be the same for you. Whether you're passionate specifically about the properties themselves or passionate about the result, you need to have some skin in the game and you need to be motivated to do this. For me, the personal motivations were to build the property portfolio, to spend more time with Emily and Asa, to spend more time helping my church family, to spend more time playing soccer, going to the gym, living a lifestyle that I choose. And so that's my motivation pushing me forward, as well as being passionate about helping others build their property portfolios. By running a business and working with only six clients at a time, we're very selective in who we work with and we're very intentional about the way we do things. It's about working with purpose and helping others along on their journey. So although we might not be billionaires and have a lot to relate to with Harry, I think there are a few things that we can take away around his thoughts around the market, around interest rates, around his thoughts around his decision-making process and how he's developed and changed over time and his motivations as an investor and as a human being and as an individual looking to build his business and, and to continue working. So if you're interested in seeing a video of myself breaking down the numbers in my property portfolio, click this video over here. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.